Metal Jesus here. Now, one of the reasons why I love collecting for the Atari 2600 is because I used to have it as a kid when I was like 10 years old. I mean, it was my first console and my first real taste at, you know, being able to game in the living room. It was such a cool idea at the time. You know, plus, the joystick has one button. I mean, how amazing is that, right? But the truth is, though, is that when you're collecting for an Atari 2600, you know, looking back and playing these games, you know, from 30 years on, some of them don't hold up quite so well. And it's kind of heartbreaking to learn that when you pop in some of those old cartridges that you really get bored after sometimes, you know, 30 seconds of it. So I had a goal. And my goal was to play through my entire 2600 game collection, which is about around 85 games, and come up with a list of Atari 2600 games that don't suck. Let's take a look. So the first game I want to show you is called Warlords by Atari. This was released in 1981, and it's a paddle game. You use the paddle controllers to move around a shield, and you take on three other opponents. What's great about this game is that it actually has great multiplayer if you want. You can actually have four human players that are trying to defend your warlord and bust out the bricks of an opponent. This game takes the simple concept of the brick busting from Breakout and because you have other opponents in here, it just adds another dimension. This is a fast, fun game. Next up is Solar Fox by CBS. Now, I didn't know about this game as a kid, and I just discovered it as I started collecting for the Atari. And this is a fantastic game. It's very similar to maybe Pac-Man, where your goal is to collect these solar cells while avoiding these sentinels. And it may look boring on the screen, but it's super fun in practice. The controls are super tight, and you have two speeds, which is the key to your success. When you push the button, you can double your speed and essentially zoom around. Solar Fox is fantastic. A game that would be on a lot of Atari fans' lists is Combat. This was released by Atari in 1977, if you can believe that. The beauty of this game is just the sheer amount of variety that's included on this cartridge. It's amazing. And it's an awesome two-player experience. Sadly, you're seeing me capture this footage with just me playing, so I didn't have a friend available, and I apologize for that. But it's still a great experience. I've had friends over and played it. A total classic. In the late 80s, when most gamers had moved on to the Nintendo, Atari did a second strong push to the Atari 2600 by releasing games like Solaris. These games included a little bit more advanced chipsets on them and really pushed the hardware in amazing ways. Solaris is probably the most complicated game I've certainly played on the console. In this game, you'll navigate star maps. You'll be dogfighting in space. At times, you'll zoom over planets and rescue stranded cadets. You'll battle star bases and doing all this while trying to watch your fuel. It's pretty in-depth and very impressive Atari 2600 game. Berserk was an arcade hit and got an excellent conversion on the Atari 2600. This game was released by Atari in 1982, and although it's not technically as impressive as the arcade version, they captured the spirit really well. This is a very playable version of the game. In the game, the levels were generated on the fly randomly, and so there's a ton of replayability here. And the controls were spot on. You can shoot in eight different directions. Although I have to admit that I miss the robotic voice that was in the arcade versions. The Atari just wasn't able to do something like that. By iMagic, we have a fantastic game called Demon Attack. Demon Attack is a Space Invaders clone. While the game doesn't have as many enemies on screen as, say, Space Invaders does, it makes up for it in great music, great animation, and the graphics were awesome for the time. Now, there were a lot of these type of games out on the Atari at the time, including Galaxian and Phoenix. But for some reason, I keep coming back to Demon Attack. It's just a really cool game. When Pitfall 2 came out in 1984, man, it blew a lot of kids' minds. This was a pretty advanced game for the time. 
I think a lot of people are surprised that you can even do something like this on the Atari. In the game, you play as Pitfall Harry, traveling through caverns, trying to rescue your friends that are stuck there, and also try to get treasure. Now, this is a big, big game for the Atari. It has 27 vertical levels, and it's eight screens across. I mean, this is a technical achievement. It, people didn't know you could do this. Now, one of the neat innovations in this game is that you have unlimited lives. If you get touched by an enemy, say, you don't actually die, you simply just go back to a checkpoint, which was really nice, especially whenever you get further into the game, you simply just want to be able to get through it. So, while the game can be challenging, it's not overly frustrating, which is nice. This list had to include River Raid. I love this game, and even today it just plays really well. Now, this is a very typical sort of top-down shooter, like you would see in a lot of different consoles. But what makes River Raid unique is that you are flying through a cavern which has walls on either side. And so essentially you cannot just sort of, you know, go back and forth at will. You really need to pay attention and not smash into the sides. It's a unique challenge to this game that isn't often duplicated. Now you really have to watch your fuel in this game, otherwise you'll crash. And all of the objects in the game are randomized, and so when you approach fuel, you have to make a decision. Do you go for points and hopefully make it to the next round of fuel tanks that you'll run into, or do you shoot them? And uh, it's an interesting sort of dynamic. Also, too, when you take out bridges, that's essentially a checkpoint. Missile Command was a classic arcade game that got an excellent translation on the Atari 2600. In the game, you are trying to shoot down incoming nuclear missiles and protect your six cities. What's kind of amazing about this game, though, is that in the arcades, you actually had a trackball. But on the Atari, it uses the joystick, and it uses it really well. This is surprisingly playable, even on the harder difficulty levels. I think what I love most about Missile Command is that the gameplay is just classic and really, really spot on. As a matter of fact, I was recently playing through Mass Effect 2, and there's a minigame in there involving monkeys that's very similar to this. It's a classic. And finally, we come to my all-time favorite Atari 2600 game, Hero. Now, long-time viewers of my channel are not going to be surprised by this. I love this game. I actually did an entire video review of it. I think it's brilliant. Your goal in the game is to rescue trapped miners in volcanic caves before you run out of energy. You have a helicopter pack that allows you to fly, dynamite to destroy thin walls, and a helmet with a laser on it to shoot small creatures. To me, this game has everything that counts and everything that I look for in a great game. There's awesome level design, the animation is really cool, the graphics are really tight, it's super fast, and the controls are spot on. As a matter of fact, if you've played this either in an emulator or some other system and you're frustrated with it, it's because you're not using an actual Atari 2600 joystick. This game is optimized for it, and it's perfect on it. That's not to say that the game is easy. As a matter of fact, it can be really challenging as it goes along. But the beauty of it is, is that it's not designed to sort of just fly through it. You need to learn the levels and how to get through them the best way possible. So, you will die a lot in the beginning, but once you learn the levels and master those controls, man, you'll love Hero as much as I do. I mean, it's certainly a game that does not suck. All right, well, that's my list of games that I think still hold up today, still are a blast to play, but there were an awful lot of games released for the Atari back in the 80s, and I just can't leave it at that. I have to do some honorable mentions, so here they are. And, you know, I'd love to hear what you like as well, some of you that are discovering the console for the first time, or maybe some, some older gamers like myself. Let me know what I forgot. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.